Hello, this is Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1-telephone.com and you can also reach us at 618-235-6959. Today I want to show you a really cool teleconcepts telephone and this is uh, Greg's telephone and Jackie's. And so basically what happened was the handset was dropped on the floor and so Greg uh, tried to repair it and he got into it and uh, I'm not sure if he had gotten something out of it but I've, I have the handset apart and I'm going to show it to you. Uh, this is a um, initial checkout on this telephone but then he had some problems with the cord and he uh, didn't finish it up and he just thought he would send it in and have it repaired. And so um, this is a very uh, a pretty rare telephone. You don't see these very often, and they were a really cool telephone. As you can see, how thin they are. So they're a pretty sought-after telephone, and they're very rare. So I want to got the handset part here, and I want to show you what's inside the handset here. He has a speaker, of course, and a microphone. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we check all the connections. Uh, because I believe that was resoldered on from from what it looks like, and then we also want to stabilize the speaker inside the handset here. So we want to stabilize all that and kind of just check everything out. And as you can see, how thin that is. So these were really cool telephones, and he's having a problem with it. And we're going to go ahead and repair it for him, and we, we just need to troubleshoot it out a little bit, but. Uh, it's a very cool telephone and they're very hard to find so uh, we're going to go ahead and take a short break and we're going to do some troubleshooting and we're going to locate him a, a handset cord he wants a just a normal sized handset cord for this telephone also and uh, we'll be right back okay we're back and so kind of want to show you a few things on this telephone uh, they have a circuit here that uh, has a potentiometer in it and uh, I'm going to show you that here. It's located on the board that was here and I noticed that the board was loose and uh, I remember Greg saying something about he had sprayed a cleaner inside this uh, telephone handset probably somewhere but uh, this potentiometer here I want to show you something about that design which um, probably did not need that it could have been a fixed resistance but uh, this potentiometer is very uh, noisy and so what we want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and give you some dial tone try to show you this and then at the same time I want to touch this potentiometer and you can hear that sizzling I'm going to go ahead and take dial tone away and I'm going to touch this potentiometer And you can hear that sizzling and cracking from that potentiometer. So I'm going to go ahead and take a short break from the video. I want to decide what I want to do. Um, I may make that a fixed value. Uh, basically, it's in the feedback circuit and uh, coming off the microphone. And so really, it uh, should not be in the circuit at all. It should be a fixed value, and there should be a... Uh, at least a better potentiometer than that because these potentiometers that they use um, are kind of one-shot deals basically. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean it and I'm going to readjust it and lock it down and you can put some uh, different things on it to lock it into place, make sure it stays and uh, continues to have the resistance but not uh, the sizzling and cracking and popping noise that you just heard. So 
we're going to go ahead and uh, do some troubleshooting on that and see what we want to do and how I want to handle it so that that uh, interference uh, and that static is not going to be a problem in the future. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And so what we've done now is this variable potentiometer here is a 10K. So what we've done, and when I first took it apart and we were getting all that crackling noise from it, and I showed you that earlier in the video, uh, the variable was in about the center. So what we've done here is picked out a uh, 51K, which would be 5,100 ohms, which uh, we're looking at green, brown, red. So basically, uh, when I put it across the meter, it, it's closer to 5,000. Uh, but anyway, you know, because there's a tolerance on uh, components. So we're within reason. We're within the middle of the range of a 10K uh, potentiometer. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is because I want to get a fixed, uh, a fixed value. There's no sense in having... Not that you can't have a variable resistor uh, or potentiometer or whatever in a uh, open mic circuit because that's what it's off of, the open mic circuit. And when you have a handset like this that takes, uh, you know, it may have lasted for years and years and years, but the fact is it's just not a good idea to have that in a handset where you have all the movement of picking it up, putting it down, hanging it up, dropping it, it's just not a good idea to put one in there. Now, did it work? It, it worked for a long time, but it's not a good idea to do that. And since it's not in a situation where it can be adjusted or cleaned easily, because you'd have to take the handset part every time and then pull the board, we're just going to remove it and put a fixed value. There should be a fixed value in moving parts. In a desk microphone where it sits on the desk, you don't have the abuse um, and the reason why I say that is on like a microphone, uh, Greg's into ham radio, and if you have a desk mic that sits on a desk, it doesn't take the abuse that a handset takes, so they put the variables on there, but you can actually get to them easier than having to open everything up. And sometimes you do have to open the microphones up, but they don't take the abuse that a handset would take. So what we're going to do here, and I'm going to return this potentiometer, it's a 10K, I'm going to go ahead and remove it here real quick. And then we're going to go ahead and... So now that component is removed. I'm going to give you a look at it. And I'll return that to Greg if he ever decides to, for some reason, use it. But I can't imagine why. There, there's no sense in it. So now what we want to do is we want to get uh, our solder points taken care of. And uh, a, a potentiometer will have three leads, but they only use two. So it's set up like in a triangle situation. So all we need is to open up our solder ports or our solder points, whatever you want to call them. And uh, I'm just using a safety pin. Sometimes you want to use, uh, you know, like a uh, solder wick that sucks up the solder. But in this case, we don't need to do that. And the girls thought this was for sewing. Really, it's for guys in electronics or woodworkers. It really didn't have anything to do with sewing. Um, the girls just picked that up and started using them. They're really for us. So I want to open them up. Now that we have our holes made, I want to get our resistor in line here. Make sure I've 
I've got enough bite. on this resistor axial lead take a look at that make sure it took second lead here. Take a look at that. Sometimes these uh, leads will have dirt on them or get some corrosion built up that you can't even see. So I want to I want to scrape that end a little bit, and clean it up, and then I want to retouch it up because I want to make sure that it holds. Now we can go ahead and plug our telephone back into the analyzer. Give us some dial tone. And now if I mess with the board. Now, I can get across the microphone and make noises, but it wouldn't be like that noisy potentiometer. So if I'm messing with the board, You will no longer hear the um, sizzling and the cracking and the popping. Give you some dial tone. And then I want to take away dial tone. And I don't hear any of the sizzling, cracking, and popping. You might hear me uh, moving the wires around, but it's not a static sensation and a sizzling and a cracking and a popping, so uh, we're pretty good. Now we also want to check, if you watch the analyzer, I want to see a good 100% modulation here when I transmit into the handset. So if you watch this red light, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, hello, hello. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello, hello. Okay, so, and we have uh, somewhat of a feedback. A lot of people don't think about this, but uh, when you're talking into a handset, there will be a proper amount of feedback in the handset, and uh, that's done on, on purpose. And, you know, so that when you're speaking, subconsciously, you, you know, you hear what you're saying, and there's a little feedback. And that's that's not just because it happens. That's because that's the way a circuit is designed. And uh, that's the way they designed it out and they wanted it. And that's with most all telephones. You will always get a little bit of your own voice coming back through the receiver. And um, it actually keeps people from talking too softly in a way, subconsciously, or too loudly. Um, so that feedback I'm getting a proper amount of feedback into that handset so I'm I'm pretty good with it and we're going to do a little more testing uh you know off video 
of it and make sure everything is proper and uh, actually use it and talk on it and, and get a feel for what it sounds like. So uh, at this point we have a fixed resistance across an open mic circuit that should have been uh, fixed to begin with just for the simple fact that you can't expect somebody to open their hand set up and adjust their potentiometer. So it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, uh, or their variable resistor, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to take a short break from uh, the video. We're going to stabilize, we're going to test and stabilize uh, our receiver and put everything back together again and then kind of go from there and uh, we'll do some final checks. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back now and we are finished up with this telephone in the repair. And so now what we're going to do is some final checks with this telephone. And uh, we want to go ahead and ring this telephone. We'll let that go a couple times. I'm going to go ahead and give you some dial tone. Now, if you watch the uh, analyzer, we're going to walk through our numbers. You'll watch the numbers go by. I'm going to end in a 2. I want to hang up, give you some dial tone. I want to hit redial. and it'll end in a two. So now what we can do, since we know that the numbers are dialing out, we'll go ahead, give you some dial tone, I'll press a two, and I want to transmit into the handset. So if you watch the red light on the analyzer, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Every time you see that red light, that's an indication of 100% modulation on transmit. One, two, three, four, five, six, hello, hello. So we know this telephone has transmit, receive, it's dialing out, and it rings in. So now what we can do is move the telephone over to a regular telephone line, and we'll go ahead and call like a time and temp number.